Hello and welcome to the Monster Mechanics Podcast, where we take creatures of myth and media and see how they can be improved. I am your host, Scott Paladin, and with me, as always, is the abbot to my Costello, Zach Jaques. What are we talking about today, Zach? This week, we're talking about the Kelpie. Uh, okay, so now we just got to remember how to do this um, whole Monster Mechanics thing after, <laughs> after a little bit a of a break. It's a whole new year, and I've forgotten everything. Yep. That's okay. Fresh minds means we'll be extra creative, right? Like it's a blank, it's a tabula rasa blank slate thing going on, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, sure. So Kelpies, um, not to be confused with Selkies, um, which are It's too late. A different, confused them. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, they're a different uh, Scottish folklore creature um, who sometimes transforms. Um, the original, or not the original, but one of the more um, common versions of the, the Kelpie myth is the idea of a horse that tempts people into getting onto its back so that it can then rush into a, some sort of body of water and drown them. And then in some versions of it, it eats them and everything, in fact, it eats everything except for the intestines, which it throws up onto the um, the shore as I guess a like warning. <laughs> anyway, because, uh, you know, old, old fairy tales got to be metal as hell. Um, oh, yeah. However, because um, I guess because Scottish people like transforming, have got a transformation fetish or something, um, they can also apparently turn into people, um, men or women, who will then try to like take humans as their brides. Um, you can often apparently identify a Kelpie who's in human form because they will have, uh, literally they'll have seaweed stuck in their hair um, because they've been out in the water, I guess. Um, and there's supposedly a different lock dwelling water horse uh, from the Celtic thing, the uh, I am not going to try to pronounce anything in Gaelic because it's E A C H dash U I S G E, which I know is going to be, it's going to be like Eichelseich or something like that. It's, it's not going to be at all how you would expect it to be. Um, but uh, we may roll some of that same idea in there. But the idea is like it's a, um, it's a, it's a horse that lives in the water and wants to drown people, except when it also comes out and turns into a human and instead tries to bone them, I guess. <laughs> So the main distinction is that it lives in a lock rather than the sea. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a general sort of idea of what we're going to work with here. Um, okay. So my first question is, why do all of these shape shifting creatures keep coming out of the water to f to f humans? Like, now we've seen this with the selkies too. Like, this is just like a thing that they like. I mean, uh, I imagine it just comes from like the the human centric, you know, yeah, thing with the like if it was just like oh they they come out of the water and and f crabs or something like. <laughs> I guess they could be out there. We just wouldn't know. Yeah, <laughs> they're actually... like, they aren't interacting with people, so who cares? <laughs> uh, I'm definitely down on the idea that that we're going to roll in this the lock version of them too, because then the Loch Ness monster could be uh, just a big ass kelpie. Um, oh yeah, do you think they, cool. they actually grow in size over time? Like, so there's like a giant human when they transform. That's rad. I love that. Okay. Um, in fact, it's not they grow over size and over time like a like a lobster. It's that they grow to the size of the body of water they inhabit. Oh, like completely fill it or like proportionally? I mean, proportional, right? Like they they or it's something about like um, or maybe they or maybe like a hermit crab. Once they get too big for the body of water they're in, they got to go find a new one, maybe. OK. Uh, uh, or and like if there's already a Kelpie there, they have to fight it. Maybe that's kind of cool. Picturing puddle Kelpie. Itty bitty, I need like little microscopic plankton sized kelpie that eventually, uh, you know, get transported elsewhere. <laughs> no, I like that. That's cool. Um, I feel like the one distinction we got to make, though, is I, I feel like it would be too easy to make them look like seahorses when they're in their like aquatic. Oh, form, sure. Right. Yeah. yeah we got to do something weirder than that. Is there something we could do with like, hmm. OK, so what if they are. What if the Kelpies only appear as horses to humans because they are somehow mimicking the shape or outline of a horse at that stage of life? Mm -hmm. So like when they are smaller, like we that's, that's like a, a lake Kelpie or a river Kelpie, right? Like they're, that's their sort of, that's the size of them at that point. Sure, yeah. But if you see one earlier, it might look radically different because it's, it's, it's formed differently maybe. Maybe it's like bipedal at that point. It gets more, more legs as it grows bigger. Or maybe, oh, that's, okay, hear me out on this. Okay. In order to come out of the water, they need, they're like, they're water dwelling creatures. And we know that like when whales get out on the water, they die because they don't have a structure to hold them up. Mm -hmm. So the Kelpie needs a skeleton. It has to grab a skeleton and use that to hold itself up as it moves okay. around on the land. So when the, the lake ones tend to grab large mammals 
like horses and probably cows too, honestly, because that's the that's the size of a skeleton they need to mimic uh, a land creature. But if you caught one that was a little bit smaller, it might be like dog sized or human sized, or it might be mm-hmm. even smaller than that, like little squirrel kelpies. And then when you get out larger than that, like the, the lock ones can't come out of the water because they can't find a skeleton big enough for them. Interesting. Hence, hence Loch Ness Monster never like coming ashore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless it found like a dinosaur skeleton or something, like a like a preserved. Ooh, I, lo- I really like the idea of them like having to like like cobble together a skeleton from from something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That be, that's that, that's rad. I also like the idea that like maybe they're not limited in how they use that skeleton. Like, the, like mm-hmm. they'll take the skeleton like as as a, a lattice work for building their their form, but like they're using it all wrong. Like. Yeah, yeah. Or just like vague, like, like it, it's maybe it's assembled sort of cor- mostly correct, but like, oh, no, no, it's a function of how much original tissue remains, right? So like, okay. if the horse still has like ligaments and um, connective tissue between the joints, then like the Kelpie can use that and just manipulate the, the horse. It's still vaguely horse shaped, right? Like maybe it's got mm-hmm. like s- stretched dried skin across some of the bones and stuff like that even. And it's just sort of underneath all of that. Whereas if it just finds disconnected bones, then it has to guess at how they're supposed to go together mm-hmm. and they can be much, much weirder. Like it's like, like it's got all the ribs as like little leg bones that are like oh. skittering across like a, like a crab or something like that. Uh, and it uses the skull as like to like house all its internal organs. Cause that's yeah. the safest, the safest uh, part of the, bo- the body or the bones. Yeah, yeah. So how good it is at, at, at being the shape of whatever it is that it's, that it's mimicking it mostly has to do with how fresh the corpse is, but it can't be too fresh because it still needs the space to like inhabit. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. So why so is that, it doing, that's why we find the, uh, like the, the entrails and whatnot on the beach is because it's basically, oh, yeah, it's it's out. Aside. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hollowing out to live inside. Okay, so here's the question. Why is it doing this? Why is it getting up on the shore? Why does it even need to be be out there? Um, well, uh, we know that it, it lures people. So right. uh, it's either luring them for, for bones or it's luring them for for food, mm. I would assume. Although I mean, it could the, be both. The whole could eat them and then use thing. the bones, right? Yeah. The whole Kelpie bride thing kind of throws a wrench in that. So I don't know. Yeah, but we don't, I mean, we don't, we're not beholden to to doing that if we don't need to. <laughs> um, we don't need to make the, the Kelpies really f- horny. <laughs> we respected that a little bit with the, uh, with the Selkies already. So, you know, we've, yeah. we've paid our dues. Uh, we could just make a horrible, I mean, that being said, as horrible and awful as it is, I've been on the internet. Somebody will still want to f- it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's, so there, I'm thinking maybe it's, it's the point where like, there is, there's a lot of, of biomass inside of a body of water, right? There's fish to eat. There's crustaceans, there's kelp and stuff. Although we're assuming this thing's probably um, carnivorous. It's probably eaten other animals, but maybe Mm -hmm. it's the thing where like by using these skeletons, it's managed to extend its range from which it can, you know, it can gather, uh, you know, calories basically by hunting outside of its normal biological range. So this is like a hunting technique basically at that point, or maybe it has to do with um, like maybe when, when it's, 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 it's really going out, like it'll eat the, the flesh, but what it's mostly after is the skeleton because maybe it's outgrown the previous skeleton that it already has, you know? Hmm. Like it's looking to grow to go up a size, although that doesn't make sense why the horse sized Kelpie would go after humans and drown them. We haven't really done just a creature that just eats like that's the whole thing. Like it's just hungry, you know, um, maybe this just is like it just likes the taste of people. It like, you know, it'll also take like other animals and stuff and get a hold of them. Mm-hmm. But it's a little harder to lure them in, you know, whereas humans are, are a little bit more gullible about these kinds what, of things. What if it's using humans or whatever it captures to chum the waters for something else to eat? Ooh. So like it's saying like, okay, here's all this blood. We're, we're going to bring in the, the the small carnivorous fish and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to eat that stuff. Eat that stuff. Or like maybe it has some sort of symbiotic relationship with it. Like it's like it's ranching them or something like the, the maybe, kelp yeah. is actually like a, like a, like a, basically it's a cowboy. It's got a herd of, um, of gar or something. Kelpie piranha rancher. Yeah. It's got a, it's got like a, it's got some freshwater fish that are all carnivorous. So it has to go and retrieve meat from above the the water surface to like bring back to its herd i guess yeah i guess a fish that would be a school wouldn't it yeah i guess that makes it a schoolmaster a teacher a schoolmaster uh tutor i guess i don't know the metaphor breaks down there yeah headmaster kelpie what is the what is the more like defined biological um like is this thing a crustacean is it a 
Is it like a slug? Is it a is it a hive mind? We haven't done a hive mind in a long time. Yeah. Um, I do like the idea of it being like some sort of like mollusk or something. Yeah, yeah. Like a um, kind of like an oyster or something. Yeah. Or like a, a scallop or a um, what all what what all what's all the mollusk types? Oh yeah, yeah. Snails. Snails are mollusks. I think the snail is probably pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like because it has that that sort of shell quality that we're sort of interacting in the same way. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, God, so you can imagine like a, 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 uh, a small one who's just like got us like a human skull on its back, like a, like a snail, oh, it's yeah. like sliding, sliding around on. And then maybe they're, because that would also mean that they're like, they've got that very permeable skin. So maybe they haven't adapted to dry climates. So, you know, if they are out of the water for too long, they're going to shrivel up. Mm-hmm. And and lose their their coherency and just lose all of their water. That's cool. I mean, they're probably not just worm like the way that a lot of these mollusks are. They're probably like I feel like they're more like starfish kind of, where they've got multiple appendages so they can wrap around the bones and like sort yeah, of insert yeah. themselves into things. I figure they're almost like kind of like um, an octopus or something, just kind of like yeah, 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 like encircling and and, and gripping. Yeah, sort of halfway between an octopus and halfway between a, and a snail. Yeah, I'm, d- I'm down with that. Maybe they even have sort of the octopus's um, uh, ability to sort of mimic its skin texture and um, and color the way that a lot of yeah. mimic op- octopuses do, where they can um, they can not just like make themselves a certain color, but actually like wrinkle or smooth out their skin to better match their surroundings. And they use that as part of the way to mimic the creature that they're in uh, impersonating. That'd be kind of interesting. Like- Imagine them like trying to like their their first attempts at interacting with humans or whatever, and like like they they see the human like moving their their face around and making mm-hmm. sounds and like they're just trying to replicate that like just like they got like a patch of skin on their like horse shoulder or something that's just yeah, like yeah. making these pseudo human face forms as it's trying to make sounds at you, or it's like got it in the right place but it's just doing it like a bad like it's like a drawing of a face you know and it's like hmm. making like nonsense syllables you know blah 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 you know like trying to like get closer and closer to human speech that's really cool yeah um uh, yeah that's rad one thing i would i don't know if it's if this is the right creature for it or not but have you ever seen a hagfish's mucus slime stuff unfortunately yes yeah, yeah. uh I, wouldn't that would be kind of a cool like telltale thing? Like the the way they had it in the original legend is that you could recognize a a, a um, kelpie that is mimicking a human by the fact that it had seaweed in its hair. But what if it was like they're all just kind of vaguely slimy all the time? And like if you touch one, it, like you see the slime like like making that bridging like like a um, like a tendril. You know, when you pull your hand back, Ugh. it's like still connecting you. That's gross. Yeah. So yeah. So it's just it's it's bringing you back to feed you too. So what's a so we're, I think we're stuck with freshwater here. Okay. What's a freshwater predatory fish from like Northern Europe? Man, fish names are f- weird. There's like black crappy and American shad and a bloater and like the devil's whole pupfish. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like a pike. They're, they're big kind of carnivorous fish. They tend to yeah, be yeah. freshwater. I mean, they can be brackish and freshwater, but. There's a freaking fish called a razorback sucker. The, how am I supposed to take these kinds of things seriously when it's called the razorback sucker? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Some, someone was uh, <laughs> out of the office and the intern took over for a day. <laughs> uh, is it weird that they just like don't really tell me if these things are like carnivorous or not? Maybe they just eat everything. Anyway, all right. <laughs> um, okay, so our, our so is the is the kelpie sentient? Is it like a does it does it get to like a human level intelligence? Over the course of its um, life cycle, or is it always just sort of animalistic? I'm thinking maybe we just go always animalistic this time. Like, okay, I think I think we tend to make things always a little malevolent and intelligent. Um, yeah, yeah, where this is just kind of operating on instinct. Yeah, or maybe it, if it is in like maybe it's smart but not like human intelligent sentient style. Mm-hmm. Like it's one of those things. Like one of the smartest creatures in the world, other than humans, are octopuses. But like they have a completely different style of intelligence than we do, like yeah. because they are so far divorced. They're not even like like we can kind of get dolphins. You know, dolphins are super smart, but like, you know, they're still mammals. <laughs> Their brains mm-hmm. are like functionally built a lot like ours, whereas like octopuses don't even have a brain in one location. Their intelligence is distributed through their central nervous system or through their nervous system over their entire body. You know, it's thinking mm-hmm. with its arms as much as anything else. And so even if this thing, maybe it's the kind of thing where like it's so 
foreign to us that even if it was intelligent, we just can't even like communicate with it. Even if it is like it's so it's so bizarre, you know, it might as well be an elder mm-hmm. god or like an alien or uh, or or it might we might it might not be intelligent at all. Maybe it's just emergent properties of a nervous system that's doing things automatically, and there isn't a a thinking thing that, as far as we can tell, inside of it. You know, but it's impossible to tell one way or the other. You know, maybe the uh, the the deep ones of uh, Lovecraft mythology are just advanced uh, Kelpie. Yeah, yeah. Of- I like I I when I when I first proposed the idea, that's where I was going to go with it. Was as it got into larger and larger bodies of water, it just gets bigger and bigger. Until Mm -hmm. like the one that's in, I don't know, the like Lake Bacall, I think it is, which is the um, the largest freshwater lake in the world, like something like a quarter of all freshwater on the planet is in Lake Bacall, basically. Oh, geez. Baikal, I think it is. Um, B-A-I-K-A-L. Yep. It's in Russia. It's just it's just it's stupidly huge. It's big. And then also weirdly, incredibly deep. Like it's not. It's not like the Caspian Sea or something like that, where it's like just it's spread out like it normally would be. It's this like vertical crevice that just goes down into the earth. And it's this weird, like foreign environment, basically. And also, strangely enough, has seals in it, despite the fact that like the nearest ocean where seals could have come from is like thousands of miles in every direction. Uh, Yeah, it contains 22 to 23 of the world's freshwater surface water, like like a quarter of all the freshwater on Earth is in Lake Baikal or Baikal. Yeah, Baikal, however it's supposed to be pronounced. Yeah, it, it, you can imagine like the the Kelpie living at the bottom of that thing has got to be huge and weird. Do you think there's only one or is it just I don't know. I think like it's better if it's just one, right? Like Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's maybe they're incredibly territorial, like they Sure. They don't they can't abide to have another one near them. Um and so they they fight over the over their their body of water basically. I wonder if maybe that means that they don't they have asexual reproduction too. Maybe they just like spawn eggs, you know. And fire them off willy nilly. Hmm. I mean, it'd be kind of interesting if, like, they didn't really even have like um, like a concept of reproduction. Like, what do you mean? Or if like that wasn't something that like mattered to them. Um, oh yeah, yeah. We, well, we don't know if they're even intelligent or not. They just occasionally will spew out some eggs, and then hmm. those things go off. You know, like a lot of a lot of aquatic creatures just like fire their eggs off into the into the freaking ocean. You know, and then, like it's like a shotgun approach. It's like yeah, whatever. Just go out there and float. It's fine. <laughs> And then, like, some of them survive and most of them don't. And it, who cares, you know? So, like, what if – so, like, in the early stages of the Kelpie development, it's, like, a small creature. It's just, like – let's say it's omnivorous even. Like, it sure. can eat whatever it wants. And it will occasionally go up onto the surface both to escape uh, aquatic predators, like, to get out of the range of, of larger fish, right? But then mm-hmm. also to occasionally uh, uh, opportunistically scavenge food sources that it wouldn't otherwise be able to get to. So it'll look for, like – a creature like a like a fox that died on the side of the river and it'll like crawl up into its skeleton and then like scamper off into the woods to like find some stuff to eat Mm -hmm. at that point like it's not it's not doing the ranching that we were talking about right like it's not doing the like cultivation the way that we think and then like at its larger stages when it needs more calories just like it's it's a like a warm-blooded style creature that just needs a lot of calories to keep itself alive it's like it finds creatures that it can then feed and keep alive in order to in order to then feed on them. And maybe it's one of those things where like it's not even get, it's not even like humans or the terrestrial creatures that it's gathering really are um, the main source of, of sustenance for its, for its school of fish. But rather mm-hmm. that it's making sure that it's getting certain nutrients to them like it need, they need protein, which is high value and they need vitamin whatever or whatever they they need certain amino acids and things to make sure they show up in the diet of these of these creatures they just like are trying to give them a diverse food source maybe but then like it's not going to keep doing that as it gets older like there'll be a point where it can't go up onto the earth anymore because it can't find skeletons so what's it doing then so i wanted to kind of like um explore a a different uh a different direction with that a little bit like what if uh like the symbiotic relationship uh, it has with these things isn't that it's like like feeding or or cultivating them so much as like they provide a useful function to it. And what if that function is like, we've, we've mentioned before that like uh, the way these Kelpie like kill its prey is by drowning it. Like what if it doesn't have like any real offensive mechanisms? Like it can't like bite or chew things. It just like envelops them. Yeah. 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 Cause it's, it's all. And so like to, to like, to get all this excess biomatter off these skeletons, it needs like, fish or something to to chew it you know into pieces unless yeah 
Although, how does it get the food out of the fish's mouth, basically? Well, I mean, if it's like small fish, like uh... kind of like um, like when you when you see a feeding frenzy, like a bunch of chunks just fall off of whatever it is they're eating and it's mm-hmm. feeding on the stuff that falls off, basically. Yeah. OK, that's kind of cool. In that case, it might have something kind of like like a like a part of its body that's or an appendage. that's kind of like a sea anemone where it's got all the little arms and each of mm-hmm. those are like basically external stomachs where like the bits of stuff falls in there and it and it digests them from there. Yeah, that's cool. So in that case, maybe what I was thinking was if it if it can't keep getting outside of its own surface level thing, maybe it doesn't entirely itself go up onto the surface once it gets past a certain point. Maybe mm-hmm. it basically just sends a single tentacle out and basically works anglerfish style. Oh, yeah. Like just lures them to the. Yeah, you're near the shore and you see like a person or whatever and you get closer to them. And by this point, this thing's had a lot of time to observe humans and has gotten pretty good at mimicking them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe it draws you in close enough for that, for the, this quote unquote person to grab a hold of you. And then it turns out that they're just at the end of a long tentacle and the boat and mm-hmm. you get whipped back into the water. Yeah. I like that. That's, that's creepy and awful. Just, yeah, that's awful. Just puppeting the, these human homunculi kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Basically like you're the, the, the anglerfish lure or like a, like a Pinocchio, a, um, a marionette. That's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Or it's got like. You know, like this kind of slightly wrong movement, you know, but like it's had a lot of time to observe what humans like to like what kind of face draws people in. So it's like a very attractive person, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's made a beautiful supermodel who's like, but movement is hard and like speech is hard. So like it's a little bit like like the words that come out of its mouth are a bit like they've been generated by a neural network, you know, like they (laughs) almost make sense, but they they kind of don't because there isn't yeah. a mind behind them that is really it's just kind of spouting things out in orders that it's heard sounds before and it doesn't understand customs or anything but it just wants to get you close enough that it can grab a hold of you and then freaking yank your ass back into the into the water yeah you can imagine it like holding you down as other fish come up to start biting you <laughs> yeah it's ho- holding you down and, and then drowning you while, while while the other fish eat yeah. it's kind of a yeah, yeah. i mean that's my nightmare uh, in the are, wave ways to go out and And then maybe at that point, maybe it's also like strong. It could be strong enough to just start like it no longer needs. It doesn't have like teeth or anything, but it can just like bodily wrench you apart if it needs to, you know, Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, that's 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 gross as hell. Okay, Uh, let's see. How far are we into this? No, we are not far at all. (laughs) We still have to like make up another like 20 minutes uh, because I forgot to ask for more uh, listener questions. (laughs) Well, Um, but like this rad i mean like this is this is gross as hell is there okay so how do you if you're going to use this in a story like i I mean it's obvious it's obviously a um a good just like monster of the week style you know it's a it's a thing that's doing creepy stuff out in the woods right like it's uh, Mm -hmm. its own stuff but does it have any sort of does it have any sort of like weaknesses like there's is there a way that we can like incorporating fighting this thing into you know, because if, if your hero was coming up against it, how is it how is it going to fight, defend them off or or are there rules of how to stay safe? Um, we started talking about it like that it was maybe like a slug like. So maybe if you threw salt on it, would it like lose its structural cohesion? Well, are, are we assuming that there's not saltwater uh, versions of this Kelpie? We've been talking about freshwater for the most part. OK, because the idea of it being saltwater to me says that it it most of the of the ocean is very far away from the from the shore. And so hmm. there isn't there's less territory for it, I guess. I don't know. It just it, the original myth was freshwater. So that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I like the idea of salt, um, like pull, pulling into pulling into that slug or, or snail kind yeah. of uh, physicality or, or it might yeah, even yeah. just be, you know, folklore. And salt has a, has some good um, because it's such a valuable resource and it, it gets used in spells and stuff. I feel like it's got a good it's got a good feel to it in terms of like fitting yeah. into myth style stuff. Like maybe maybe there's a custom of like you know like uh, rubbing salt in your in a stranger's hair or something when you meet them or or no putting salt in your own hair so that like oh, yeah. when it grabs you it uh, uh, it will you know be be pulled off you know because you're you're interacting with its with its skin you know imagine them like like brining clothing or something yeah yeah or even just like make sure you always have like a pouch of it on your belt or something that's easy grabs you can throw it um, mm-hmm. maybe there's a thing where like or like you know, the, uh, it's f- gross when people spit on their hands and then shake as like a yeah. as like a, a ceiling deal. But what if you like put salt on your hand and then then you shake mm-hmm. where it's like it's like making sure that this is a real person um, by the same token. Maybe there's a societies that have to deal with these a lot, maybe have 
rituals about communication where it's like you have to you 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 say like I don't know code words or passphrases or some sort of like algorithmic you know or, or ritual or something like that where like if you didn't know the logic behind what was being said then. Um, like if you're just memorizing it rote, then you're going to say it wrong so that people will know you're not really a person. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to think about like a way to do it. Well, like, like maybe like different months of the year, you have different call and responses for, um, for dealing with a stranger at night, you know, mm -hmm. um, where like, you know, in, in January you would say you would call out one thing and it, you would expect a particular response based on, or, or maybe like the phase of the moon or something like that, where it's like something where everybody could figure out what the correct response was. And it's very arcane, but it's the idea that like this thing can't just blindly mimic what people are doing in order to pass as human. Hmm. Uh, I wonder like how that would uh, affect society. Like, like if there are things like that affect your your judgment or like impair, like like alcohol or whatever might. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if if you're out there on the beach drunk and someone like shouts the code word at you, and yeah. Now, well, I mean, like you might you might not respond correctly and therefore like get thought to be one of these things that might get killed or maybe people just run away from you because the idea is like you want to avoid them more than fight them necessarily mm -hmm. i wonder if you could if this is a magical world is there some sort of like way to use the kelpie like is there like if you if you killed one and grabbed its body is it useful for something or um hmm. maybe like the the way it like um like bonds with bone structures is like an automatic process rather than something like it's doing, um, so like there, maybe there's some sort of like binding elements to it that they use Kelpie for. Yeah. You could like, you could like use it to, to, to lash bones together or maybe, maybe something that's all like bone enough, like st some kinds of stones or something like that, where you can use it for mortar mm -hmm. or, um, yeah, or something like that, or, or maybe wood where you can use it for crafting like sinew. Um, or do you hmm. think there's like, um like folklore or something about tricking Kelpie into using like bad bones or something or like fake bones that like deteriorate or poison the Kelpie. Hmm. That's, that's cool. I like that where you like give it something that's been like, or like bones that have been soaked in salt or something like that. They've been brought yeah, yeah. or pickled or something like that where it'll throw them off. What if there's a thing where like, what if bones that have been used by a Kelpie are useful in some way? Like maybe it does something to them. I don't know what that would be, but like maybe prolonged contact with the with the Kelpie's um, biomass being used for them, like in like starts to replace or, or otherwise modify the structure of the bone so that it becomes a material that can be crafted with, you know, maybe. Or it, what if um this is going kind of kind of kind of off base and kind of weird with it? That's like fine. what if what if there's like some like uh, weird like bio modification, like like unnecessary surgery type stuff where people are like trying to implant Kelpie bones because it gives them special powers or something. I definitely like that. I'm just, we'd have to establish some magical powers that the Kelpie would have, um, mm -hmm. that would somehow like leech into the bone. Um, which is cool. I like that. I mean, like we, we can get, we'd been mostly sticking to sort of a biological framework for the Kelpie, but I'm totally ready to move them off into a more magical context. Maybe they, um, maybe they've got like illusion powers because of their mimicry abilities. Oh yeah. Where like, you know, they they're not just like a like a like an octopus, like, you know, physically mimicking, you know, a, a creature, but they're actually like projecting the image around them and mm -hmm. having that happen, you know, lets the magic leech into the bones so that when you get a hold of one of those bones, you can like maybe you could carve one into a into a wand in order to do magic. But then you could also mm -hmm. like, I don't know, implant like you could you could put them into your body or something like that in order to like project a permanent illusion that's different about yourself, you know, mm -hmm. to like change your outward appearance, even though you're not you haven't actually changed the physical amount of your body, but you're making everyone see something different about you. Um, oh, yeah. Like like one of those things where, you know, if you if you've if you've had a tooth removed and you implant a tooth that had been part of the, the Kelty Kelpie spell skeleton or something like that, it allows you like it makes you it basically gives you charisma bonus, it makes you think that people are. People think you're prettier and like more with it and handsomer and younger than you used to be, you know, mm -hmm. that could be cool. Yeah. Or like carrying uh, or or and maybe it, or they could have the opposite effect. Sometimes that's always fun about um, magic is that you can use it to do the, the reverse of what it had been doing, which is like having a necklace of finger bones that were used by a Kelpie allows you to see through magical illusions, you Ooh, know? Yeah. Uh, just by like they counteract, they 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 act they act in a they phase out with other illusions. That'd be mm -hmm. cool. 
or they, or we could have something where that, you know, it lets you breathe underwater. Like if you have, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the rib bone of a Kelpie or. Yeah. 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 And so in that case, maybe like you could even have a story where somebody is deliberately feeding creatures to the Kelpie in order to produce these magical arf- artifacts and then mm-hmm. somehow extracting them back out later. That'd be kind of cool. That in fact, a quest giver, I mean, if, we're, if we're talking in an RPG context, a quest giver who gives the, um, who gives the, the the party a quest to go kill a Kelpie or or otherwise attack it and remove the bones and bring them back. And it finds it, you find out that like the reason why this thing has human bones is because the original quest giver had been like sending other people to die. And so when it sends you off, you're either going to die and become part of like become the next set of bones or you're going to bring back what he wants. Mm-hmm. Or even oh, maybe like you bring back the first set and he sends you out for another one. But this time he's screwed you over such that he thinks that you're going to get killed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Just kind of using this thing as a um, part of the natural environment so that it can, so he can get to its own ends. I like the the idea that, like, different bones do different things is is powerful, too, where, like, there's a whole science, or not even science, but, like, a, a logic or or differentiation between the various different types of, of creatures. So, like, if you give it a, like, a small creature, you get a different set of effects because you've got a, a small skull and some rib bones and stuff like that. But if you give it, you know, a horse... And you've got a horse femur, you know, that gives you a whole, that allows you to unlock different kinds of magic or something like that. I could imagine, um, like, you know, warlords or something that are trying to like posture or whatever, like, you know, mm-hmm. have armor made of bones and whatnot. And like, not all of it is like, probably none of it is from a Kelpie, but like, they're trying to give off that impression that they're, you know, have all this mystical power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, um, there's a whole category of, um, of, of things that are also kind of bone like, but wouldn't actually be bones like, um, chickens and a lot of other birds will actually swallow small stones and keep them in their stomach in order to help grind up their, um, their, what they eat because they don't have teeth. Mm-hmm. And since our Kelpie is similar, like where that it doesn't really have teeth to, to, to devour something, it might ha- take stones within itself or maybe bones and use them in the same way. Like it'll grind up chunks of bone. And that could be they, maybe that maybe stuff that had been used for that has a whole different set of magical properties. The ones that were, I forget if they're actual stones or if they're just something produced by goats. Goals, I think they're called. Um, hmm. G A O L goal. Could be wrong about that. Um, um, no, that's just a another way to spell jail. Yeah. Uh, what's the thing? A bezoar. A bezoar. Oh right. Yeah. Uh, and those are just a mass. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, they can be they can be all kinds of stuff. They were thought to have magical powers back in the day, um, specifically mm-hmm. that if you took a bezoar out of a goat and swallowed it, it would prevent you from getting poisoned, which is gross as hell. But yeah. that's like properly good. There's a whole genre of gross magic that I think is like I'm not going to say it's underutilized. It's utilized well, but it's always interesting. It like definitely sets a tone when like the only way to get magic done is to do stuff that other people would be unwilling to do because it's it's gross or dangerous. Yeah, uh, this is sort of a, a little aside. Um, yeah, we got time. One of the one of my favorite um, favorite like ways that I saw of someone having uh, magic be cast in a in an RPG was it was kind of um, this guy who had like sort of ancestral ancestral spirit magic or whatever and his spells were mm-hmm. super powerful but to use them he had to bite off one of his fingers each time he cast a spell yeah so that's that's suitably horrific um <laughs> yeah uh, I, I got i mean like i i definitely like the idea that like magical systems that require you to do like 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 magic is not it's some, sometimes it's portrayed as being just about secrets but like also magic being portrayed as like what are you willing to do to get your goals done is also kind mm-hmm. of a, a cool a cool parallel you know, making making Faustian style bargains and and just doing gross, awful things that no one else would be willing to do is 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 pretty cool. And things like, you know, taking a a, a kelpie, you know, finger bone and like swallowing it or something, or like, um, uh, you know, sewing it into your skin or something in order to Ugh. have additional effects, right? Um, yeah. Or like, yeah, I mean, like, well, the longer we, that we go on with that idea, the worse it's probably just, we just have to keep going, make it, making it worse. But you can imagine, you can, you can, you can let your imagination run wild <laughs> about how awful that kind of stuff could be. How do you think a society in modern day would react to, or evolve alongside, you know, uh, Kelpie? It's a good question. I feel like the, 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 the Western modern modus operandi is to figure out how you can exploit something. Yeah. 
And so if we're, if we're thinking about a modern world, I think we're thinking probably about the non-magical version of the Kelpie, right? Where sure, like, yeah. It's just a sort of biological thing. And then it's about either like removing a top quality predator from a biosystem so that we can do the fishing instead, or it's about like, is this thing a resource that we ourselves can like, is like Kelpie leather useful for, you know, high fashion or something? Or mm-hmm. is it about, you know, like, do they... Do they produce some sort of like, um, like if you, is their blood useful for medical tests or something like that? Their, um, like their mucus grass. secretions or, you know, some, some powerful bonding agent or something or yeah. a lubricant, you know, for or something like that. Um, On that note, goodbye. <laughs> all right. Well, I didn't have any questions this week, so I guess we really can just be done. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, on that note, if you guys, because I forgot to send out a question or quite an, a, a, um, a call for, for user questions. If you have listeners, oh man, my brain just left that sentence behind. Uh, if you have questions for us that you would like us to answer on the show, please tweet them at monster pod, or you can send them via email to a monster mechanics podcast at gmail.com. Uh, I actually, I sent out a thing or said on the podcast a while back for people to, to email us and people did. And I just forgot to check for like a month and a half. So if you sent us an email already, I definitely appreciate it. You were all very nice. I did read them like a week and a half ago. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's our first, it's our first episode back after the new year. I think we're entitled to one. <laughs> sh- <laughs> we did fine (laughs) we did fine we just started a whole nother podcast in intervening time um on that note i i've officially released our discord open to the public so um if you want to go to www.scottpaladin.com slash discord you will find our um very small little community there you can also ask questions for us there there's a channel called uh prompt submission i believe um that you could you could throw our questions in there as well and uh That's it for us this week. We'll see you in Mm -hmm. February. Come say hello. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Monster Mechanics. If you'd like to send us listener questions, we can be tweeted at at MonsterMPod, or you can send us an email at MonsterMechanicsPodcast at gmail.com, or you can ask questions in our Discord, which can be reached at scottpaladin.com slash discord. If you want to support the podcast, why don't you leave us a review in Apple Podcasts or Podchaser or Podcast Addict. Uh, We keep an eye on those, and it gives us a boost every time we read one. Um, If you'd like to support us monetarily, we have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash monsterpod. Now for the credits. Monster Mechanics is produced and edited by me, Scott Paladin, and hosted by myself and my best friend, Zach Jaquays. All of the ideas generated during this podcast are released under a do-what-the-f*** you want public license. This is a Library of Cursed Knowledge production.